All right, if we are matching a graph with its equation, then I can look at my A value, my P value, and my Q value to solve how this is going to look. The P and the Q are great indicators because the P value and the Q value are going to be what my vertex is. In the first case, if I have Y is equal to X plus 8 squared, well in this case I got an A value of 1, a P value of negative 8 because it's going to be the opposite, and a Q value doesn't exist on the end of 0. Well, that negative 8 for P and 0 for Q is my vertex. So just looking at this, I can start at the origin and go to the point negative 8 and 0 and see that there's only two possibilities for which one it could be. The second thing I need to account for is the A value is positive 1, which means that it's going to open upwards. So this one is going to have to be A. It's the only one that actually fits the criteria. For my second one, it has the same vertex, but a negative A, which means it opens downwards. That's going to be my H. For the next one, my P value is negative 5. My Q value is positive 4. So I start at the origin and go to negative 5 and positive 4. And the only one that runs through and has a vertex at this point is B. For the next one, it's going to be the opposite. It has a P value of positive 5 and positive 4. The only one that has a vertex at 5 and 4 is going to be G. The next one has a vertex at 2 and negative 1. There's two possible <coughs> excuse me. There's two possible cases. Either it can be E or F. Now in this case, I have an A value of 1. If I think of the standard shape of my graph to go from the point of 0, 0 to the next point, which would be 1 and 1, I move right 1 and up 1. In this case, I need one that has the same shape, so I'm going to go right 1 and up 1. And if I follow along here, I can see that the one that has a standard shape is going to be E. The next one has the same vertex, but suddenly the Y values should have been tripled, so instead of going right 1 and up 1, I would go right 1 and up 3, and see that this matches with F. And for the last ones, I'm going to have the point of negative 3 and positive 2. And negative 3 and positive 2 is going to give me graph D. And negative 3 and negative 2 is going to give me the last one, graph C. For example 3, the parabola y is equal to x squared is transformed as described below. Its image equation has the form of y is equal to a bracket x minus p squared plus q. Determine the equation of the transform quadratic. So first thing, reflected in the x-axis means that a is negative. Translated four units right means that P is going to equal positive four. So I'm going to fill in the information that I know and state that Y is equal to A is negative. It doesn't say anything else about a vertical stretch so I'm just going to assume it's negative one and not rate the one because it's redundant. 
x minus p, we said p is 4, squared, and it doesn't say anything about a vertical translation, which means q is just going to be 0, and I'm not going to include it. For b, it says that it's stretched vertically by a factor of 1 fourth about the x-axis. That's my a value. It's translated two units down. Vertical translations are my q, and because it's going down, it's going to be negative 2. And in this case, we don't hear anything about a reflection, so A isn't going to become negative. And we don't hear anything about a horizontal translation, so P is just going to be 0. So I'm going to say that Y is equal to 1 over 4. I don't need to do the brackets because P is 0, so I can get rid of the X minus 0 squared and just say X squared and then just include the Q value at the end, minus 2. And there it is. For example 4, the point of 3 and 9 lies on the graph of f of x is equal to x squared. If we're describing what happens to the point when each of the transformations is performed in the ordered list and identify the corresponding points. Well, if I am reflected in the x-axis, y becomes negative. So my point of 3 and 9 is going to become 3 and negative 9. The second thing that's going to happen is it's going to move four units down and three units to the left. Well, any time that I'm moving down, that's the same as me saying I subtract from y. Any time that's moving left means that I'm going to subtract from x, which means that now I'm going to wind up having 3, and because it's moving to the left, minus 7 from x, and that negative 9, because it's moving down, minus 4 for y. And I get to my final point of negative 4 and negative 13. There's my new point. For the second one, I start at the same point, 3 and 9. It says it wants us to multiply y by a factor of 2. So I'm going to say that it's going to be 3 and... 2 times 9, which would be 3 and 18, and then finally it wants a reflection, which means that y is going to become negative, 3 and negative 18, and there's my new point.